Hello. This is one of three classes that you will need to take for Aloha Stored Value classes um, or getting those, uh, those cards set up. So the first class here, I'm going to be covering under the header System Setup. As you see, um, Company Setup Wizard is the one I'm going to be talking about. Now, when the Company Setup Wizard comes up, you will essentially be, you'll see and have access to the Aloha Stored Value Configuration button. So I'm going to click on that. And these are the two uh, radio buttons that will have tabs attached to it that I'm going to be talking about for your required um, session one to set up Aloha Stored Value. The first radio button is Specify In-Store Database Settings. So I'm going to hit Next, and you'll see two tabs, In-Store Database and Store Database Settings. The In-Store Database has four choices. Your first choice is the default option, and that is what most people use today. The database will include all Aloha Stored Value cards available for redemption. Again, if you have one store, you know, six different stores, you would want all the, if you want your customers to go to any one of your locations and redeem the card, that's what most people use today. The next two options are available for the customers that have 75 plus stores. We've put these in place to where they can specify uh, specific cards to be uh, accessible in certain replication groups, which is the second option, or that location only. Again, that's where most people use that if they have 75 plus stores. Now we do have a last option, which is called virtual mode, and it resides at the central site only. Now when I say central site, that is referring to our data center um, here in Dallas. So essentially what that means is that your database resides at the central site only. There is no local cash information, no customer's cards, no card balances stored at the store level. So if you were to select option number four, the virtual mode, you would need, uh, you know, all transactions would go directly to the central site. So if your internet connection is down, your gift card system would be down because there's no way for the system to connect to the central site to verify the customer's card balance. Most people use option one, meaning that they have individual local caches at the store. Each store has its own card cache uh, and it can be updated frequently, uh, which we'll talk about that frequency here in a minute. Uh, but essentially, the option one here is what most people use today. The Store Database Settings tab under the Redundancy Settings box, your options will be grayed out just like mine are. The, the local cache at the store level will reside on the back office workstation only. That is not an option that anyone can change. The only selections you have here is Purge Thresholds. You can select both of these, one or the other, or neither. Most people don't use purge thresholds. However, if you would like to, um, essentially what this is, is the customer's card balance, if it's less than a dollar, for example, will be purged from the local cash. Or if the card has not been used in 90 days, for example, the card information will be purged from the cash. Now, just because you're purging it from the local cash does not mean you're deleting the customer's card number or the card balance. All it's doing is moving it from one location to the next. So if you said, uh, let's not use this bottom option here, you just use the first one. So any customer's card that's less than a dollar, uh, you know, have had pennies on it, 25 cents, 50 cents, et cetera, anything less than a dollar would be moved from your local cash to the central site. Okay, customer can still come in and use their balance, uh, use that card. Uh, it'll just be at the central site. All right, so it'll look at the local cache first and see if that customer's card number resides there. If it does, great. If it doesn't, then it'll connect to the central site and bring down that balance for you. The same thing with the uh, the card. If it hasn't been used for X amount of days, it will look in the local cache. If it's not there, it's going to connect to the central site to bring down the customer's card number and balance. So again, you do not have to use these if you don't want to. And if you wanted to use the default option here that I discussed, there is nothing here on the first two tabs for you to change. Just make sure if you do make any changes that you hit the Save key. I'm going to hit Back because I want to talk about the Next radio button, which is Auto Approval and Connection Settings. So when I hit the Next button, you see two new tabs, Approval Settings and Connection Settings. 
on the approval settings, the auto approve cards. Most people will leave it to auto approve cards at zero. Okay, that is the default option. However, if you wanted to utilize this, I'll enter in $5 here, for example. To auto approve the cards if the check amount is less than $5. So what, uh, what it's doing is uh, if your internet connection is down or something can't connect to get the gift card balance, you have this auto approval uh, in place. What it will do is that, you know, the customer will try to use their gift card, and if it, like I said, it can't connect uh, because the internet's down or some other reason, then if you have this option in place, it's going to auto-approve that guest check for $5. Now, if the check is more than $5, um, you'll, they'll need to pay by some other form of payment, but it says here if the check amount is less than $5, you're going to go ahead and auto-approve that guest check, all right, based on their gift card. Now, if the customer doesn't have that much money on their gift card, that's the downside to auto-approving cards is that you could lose money along the way. Let's say they only had a dollar on their gift card left, but you auto-approved their guest check for $5, okay? Again, there's a potential to losing money um, if you only changed it to maybe a dollar. Uh, still 50 cents here and there along the way, you could lose money. So just keep that in mind when you uh, do set up auto approving cards. Like I said, the default option is zero and that's what most people use today. The other option is the default option here, connect to the central site to verify the card balance. It is recommended that you do always connect to the central site and verify the card balance. In the same rules like I talked about above, if the connection can be made, um, if no connection can be made, then you go ahead and auto approve those cards. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the same rules as I talked about, if you enter in a dollar or five dollars, it's the same auto approving rules. Most people leave it at zero, but again, there's that option there that you can auto approve your cards. The last option, you can change it. If you'd just like the system to just reject those cards if they're not in your local database or if they are not auto-approved. So essentially, if any card, uh, customer's card balance is not in your local cache directly, then it will decline it from the POS system. Like I said before, you want to always try to connect to the central site if you can. If you can't, then that's where, again, you decide if you wanted to use that auto-approval cards. The next tab is your connection settings tab. The delay disconnect box. The only customers that will use this particular box is if you have dial-up. If you have high-speed DSL, you can ignore this option. The delay disconnect is used for those customers that have dial-up within your stores, and you can set your um, holding time, 15, 20 minutes, however long you want to put that. What it will do is it will dial out, it will connect to the central site, it will hold that connection for 15 minutes, continue to process any sales or redemptions that you have during that 15 minute time, and then it will disconnect. Okay, and it will dial the next time you have a sale or redemption. Now for everyone, um, I do recommend that you change this particular option here. The default option is occurs twice a day, 3 a.m. and at 9 a.m. You can change these times, okay? You can make it 3 p.m., and then this one, uh, you know, you can make it at 11 uh, p.m. So it's still syncing twice a day. It's just different times. That uh, is fine. And however, I recommend that you make it in an interval. The reason is, I'll go back up here, if you left it at 3 p.m. and at 11 p.m. If I came in, let's say I came in at um, noon, okay? I came in at lunchtime and I used my gift card, and it swiped, and it synced up the database at 3 o'clock, all right? But then I decided to come back. So, you know, at that point, my gift card balance is correct. But then I decided to come back after 3, which was a happy hour. So I came in, I used my gift card. And then I decided to come back again um, with uh, my friends for dinner, okay? So it was around 7 or 8 o'clock. Then I used my gift card again. Well, between that time, the gift card system did not sync up my balance and what I have and hadn't used so until 11 o'clock. So that's why I was saying that you want to sync up as much as possible because um, you want your customer's gift card balance to be accurate at all times. That's why I recommend that you do it every 15 minutes. 
You can do it every hour or 45 minutes, but the most you can do it is every 15 minutes. It does not cost you more whether you do it twice a day or every 15 minutes. And it does not interfere with anything that happens on the floor. Your servers can, you know, still do their checkouts, ringing up. Um, you know, like I said, it's a behind-the-scenes process, so nothing is interfered there. So you want to make sure that your times here, um, your starting time, is um, – 